Well, those you can stand, you can have a seat, at least for a little while. Man, God is just so good, isn't he? Oh, can you remember when you didn't know him? <laughs> Me too. It's been a while, but I can remember what that was like, just not knowing the Lord and being in an environment such as we're in tonight and, and looking at people and going, you guys are weird. <laughs> you know, I mean, what kind of cult did I walk into tonight, you know? And, and if, if that's you tonight, oh, I get it. I know, I understand. But I, I assure you, what you're experiencing tonight in this room is as real as it gets. It's his presence, man. And, and you know, we're not going to sign you up for some membership and take your social security number and your, your bank routing number and, and, and move you into some convent on an island or something and make you sign something in blood, you know. It, it, you've just walked into a place where people just love God, you know, just love God. And, and, and people that came to an end of themselves and said, I can't make me happy. I can't fix me. I, I give up. I'm done, you know. And I came to the end, and I came, and Jesus was sitting there, and he was waiting for me, just like he sat in the dirt for the woman at the well, and he waited for her. You know, he was waiting for me. Why would the God of all creation wait in dirt for me? That stuff that he made me out of, why would he sit in it and wait for me? Because God is love. Men, I tell you what, I've had so much fun this weekend. How about you guys? Yeah. If the Lord touched you, men, and he's changing your life this weekend, I want you to say Jesus with me. Jesus! Oh, man. I heard the movie 300 in that. It was good. Spiritual Leonidas is in the room. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, man, it was so great. Ladies, thank you so much for praying this weekend for the men that, that took the time and sacrificed their schedule to say, hey, we're putting aside our agenda, our recreation time to press in spiritual matters and seek the Lord. Men, God bless you for doing that. I want you to know you're investing in eternal matters. And women, you were praying for your husbands. You are praying for your brothers, your fathers, your children. And you were just saying, Lord, and, you, you know, and God heard your prayers. We had a testimony time at the end of the conference um, this afternoon and just opened up the room for guys to share what the Lord was doing in their lives. And it was quite overwhelming, was it not? I mean, just listening to the things that were going I mean, we knew God's glory was touching people, but it, the stuff that we were hearing was like, oh my gosh, wow, I didn't know that happened, didn't know that happened. And, and, and men were getting revelation that they didn't even know they had that issue going on, and boom, the Lord just read their mail. Don't you love it when God reads your mail? Here comes Jesus, the postman. Ah, caught, <laughs> you know? And that's what it's like. I mean, what we like to do when someone gives a teaching or a sermon and it's just about us, they go, someone told him that about me. Who does he think he is, you know? No, that's postman Jesus. He's come ringing and he's talking to you, you know? I love it when he does that. He's just so personal, isn't he? He's so personal. And when we listen to him, it just, man, everything changes. And for many brothers this weekend, things changed. They just changed. I mean, God just said, hey, I'm, I'm taking you. We're switching chapters here. That chapter, you've been in that chapter way too long. Time to turn the page, you know. And, and the Lord was doing that. And what we want to do is we want to dive into some prayer tonight. Can we pray too much in the house of the Lord? I mean, when the presence of the Lord gets that thick, I don't know about you, but I just don't want to stop, you know? And so we got the elements here, and, and the cup and the bread, that's my favorite part of Christianity and corporate gatherings is just, man, going to the table of the Lord. And that's why, I don't know if you know, but we, just, we have it here all the time because you never know when the Holy Spirit's going to move someone during worship and just say, man, I, I'm forgetting about the finished work, and I'm finding myself getting back on that whole roller coaster ride of law I'm not down with that. I'm getting off. I'm getting back on the grace train and thanking God for he paid the price. Yes, Lord. And we go to the table. We dive in head first. Amen. And so that's what the, the table of the Lord is about. But it, to actually add on to that a little bit tonight, 
we're going to have an opportunity to have some healing, not only in our own soul, but in some relationships. We're going to get some healing in our relationships. Because, see, if we're getting right with God, man, the natural response of that is relationships get affected. They do. There's healing that takes place. And so what we're going to do in a minute is have any brothers that want to come up and say, hey, you know what? The Lord was touching my life this weekend, and I want to recommit my walk with God and my call to be a husband to this woman that's with me tonight because I have failed as a leader in her life and I've accepted the grace of God that dad's not mad at me. He loves me even though I'm a, just a flake at times, but he loves me all the same. But I'm just done doing that. And I'm accept, I've accepted his power and I, I, wanna, I wanna make it public. I'm not ashamed of it. I rejoice that God's touched me and I want the blessing of the body and I want the blessing of my wife or my son or my daughter whoever that is, and, and tell you what, there's going to be some healing in this house tonight. There's going to be some healing. There's going to be some tears in this place tonight. There needs to be. There needs to be some release. You know, we get this, all these lies and shame and fear and all these things that the enemy just bottles us up, and man, we need a catharsis. We need a, just a cleansing. We need to, it needs to go in Jesus' name. And when you get around a bunch of people that are passionate about truth and passionate about Jesus Christ, who is the truth, I mean, let me tell you what, darkness says, it's just the gremlin, bright light, bright light, you know, I'm out of here. That's what happens. And, it, and the byproduct is all this freedom, all this peace, all this genuine Christianity, the real thing. What we read about in the Bible is just the real deal. Are you guys down with this? Good, I want to make sure I'm not some maniac up here by myself. That you guys are hearing this and bearing witness with this, you know. Otherwise, I'm a lunatic, so we're, we're, we're together. And I'm still a lunatic, but we're still together. So with that said, if you are a man that came to the conference and you're looking to go deeper in what God did in your life this weekend, and you're saying, yeah, man, I, I, there's some areas that I am committing, recommitting my life to the Lord, whether it's relationships, whatever it is, and, you know, purity in my life with God, and I'm looking to actually make a public stand in that area of my life tonight, and I want blessing of the Lord. I want an anointing to be poured out upon me tonight. If that's your heart, then I want you as a man just to stand to your feet right now and say, that's my heart. I want that touch tonight. I want God to actually pray over me. I want the, the Holy Spirit to touch me. Amen. 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 So, some good stuff's going to happen, guys. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? All right. Come on up here on the stage. Come on up here. I want you to face the body of Christ. Come on up. That's all right. You're not going to, like, fall down dead or something. Come on up here. It's all right. All right. All right, where's, where's Pastor Ty? There he is. Come on up here, brother. Man. Now, how many of you men here tonight have someone in this room, whether it is a sibling, uh, a spouse, someone you're going, yeah, my compromised lifestyle as a leader, as a man, has affected their life, and they're in this room. I want you to raise your hand if that's the case. Okay, okay. Now, if you're pretty sure that hand was connected to you, <laughs> I want you to raise your hand right where you're at. Okay. All right, those of you who raised your hand, come on here and stand right out front. Come on. I saw you, Lindsay. Don't, don't hesitate. Come on. Uh, huh? All right. Well, guys, what we're going to do, because... This is God's house. We don't have an agenda. There's no, you know, day timer, schedule or clock we're watching here. We're just here to see what God wants to do in our lives. So I'm, we're not going to go person by person. 
and just say, hey, you've got to share something. But what I'm going to do is make an opportunity for you to share anything that's on your heart. To say, hey, you know what? I want to look in my spouse's eyes right now, and I want to say, you know what? I'm asking forgiveness for this. Forgive me, I'm committing this to you because God has done this in me. You know what I mean? Just, just basically establishing this covenant because this is a sacred time. I mean, the Holy Spirit, the angels of God, man, they are all over this right now. Heaven is looking, and this is real. This is not phony or religious. This is really intimate. And so you've got an opportunity to look in the eyes of that person that you know you need healing with and say, you know what? God is doing this. Will you forgive me? Will you be in agreement? So with that said, is there anyone here that you want to look at someone and say, hey, yeah. You can look at me. <laughs> yeah. Try to get through this. Uh, 48 years ago in April, this guy was born. And about a month later, uh, I moved Susan and him to Miami to begin a new career. And I spent the next 28 years chasing that will o' the wisp success. And in many people's eyes, that was the case. And I was fooling myself all those years saying, thinking, convincing myself and anybody else that would listen that I was investing my time and my talents in a better future. And my kids grew up pretty much without me. And I know you resented that, and rightfully so. 20 years ago, uh, I found myself on the floor of my office with a 9 millimeter pistol stuck in the back of my head, fully convinced that I was going to be face to face with Jesus just any second. And in those, what I thought were going to be my final moments, I didn't think about all the club trips and all the awards and all the money. What I did think about was how I had uh, shortchanged me and you and we've never cleared the air on that. Mm -hmm. So now I apologize. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd have done better. Yeah. I already forgave you. I know. I already did. And I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> what an awesome dad. You know, he was my best man at my wedding. You know, he's the man, so. Okay. Um, I'll keep it short. I failed you as a husband. I failed as a father to both Michael and Vincent. And uh, it's going to change. And uh, I'm sorry. Can you forgive him? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a yes. Thank you, Lord. I can. Amen. Amen. You okay? You okay back there, brother? To my family, Lindsay, Vinny, to my wife, my daughter that's not here. I was present, but I wasn't there. I felt you guys as a leader, as a father, as a husband. And I found a place with a lot of other broken men like myself. And God is giving, him, giving me another opportunity to do it right. So please forgive me. 
I need to. I need to restart within myself, in my house, to be the leader that God put me to, to be. To be your leader, honey. To be your leader. Your leader, Vini, to be an example. As a man of God, as a disciple. It's a new beginning. Mm. Mm. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Yeah. For 17 months since your mom died, I have not showed you the love that Jesus shows us. I just apologize. I need to show you the love that God shows all of us. Matthew, you received that, buddy? Yeah, amen. Amen, Christian. Uh, to my mom and dad. You guys have been there through everything with me. And I just want to say sorry for all the times I disrespected you. You guys were there through everything. And when it came to football, when it came to grades, you guys were always on me. And I just want to say I'm sorry for disrespecting you. And to my brother, and there's no reason why two brothers should go six months without talking to each other. Anybody else? Yeah. Amen. Um, to my wife Shannon and my daughter Sophia and my stepson Josh, uh, who's not here. Uh, Shannon, I always, I haven't always been the man I've wanted to be. I've learned through the brotherhood of my friends here today that I can be a much better father and a much better stepfather and a husband to you. I'm sorry for the past three years that I followed a career overseas to provide for my family and put finances ahead of our marriage. I look more clearly as that is more important with my priorities. I struggled with being a provider as well as a husband. For that, I'm sorry. I love you very much. And from this day forward, I will walk with God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. I, th I think what I want to say to you, Julie, is thank you. Nobody ever loved me as much as you. No, no doubt. Thank you. To my wife, Cindy, um, I'm sorry I failed you as a husband, as the leader of our home, for not being the good steward that I was called to be. I pray that you forgive me. I idolized the job that the Lord gave me. And now that he's taken it away from me, I lost my identity. I lost my way. And I forgot what God made me be to be. Forgive me. To my son Ethan, my second born. Forgive me, son, I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah. Today, uh, I would like to rededicate my life to Christ and my vows to my wife. You have been so faithful to me. He who finds a good wife finds what is good and receives faith from the Lord. Thank you. I will never stop ever saying, I just can't find the way to stop saying that I'm so sorry for hurting you so much. When you, say, when you did say, I do, I do you did really meant it. And I'm 
I'm so sorry for hurting you all these years. I want to hold you accountable, and I want you to hold me accountable to this promise from now on. Amen. Ask me, would you forgive me again for hurting you so much? I want to make that public today. Amen. I know that some of you that are listening to these men, you want to believe it, and there's part of you that goes, I've heard this before, or something like it, or I'm afraid to believe it's real. And so many of you are feeling, man, I felt abandoned with the love and the affection and the provision and attention from some of these men in my life. And I want you to know that that has nothing to do of the sincerity of their love for you. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do that they've had a wounded part of their soul and they've sought to fill it in another way. But it doesn't mean that they didn't value or love you. It just means they were lost and they were looking in the wrong direction to find to fill that part of them something that we all do, you see? But the enemy what wants to say, you know what, I'm just not that important. They don't love me. That's more important. That's not this more important. They were just lost, you see? That's, that's all it is. They love you. And, and, and they're up here because they're saying, man, they just want to display Jesus and skin to you every day of their life. That's what they want to do. And they mean it. When you hear Lewis go, hey, hit me accountable. Guys, that's what we got to do. We got to go, hey, how's things going in your marriage? How's things going with your kids? What's going on? It's not so important what you're doing here at Reveal Fellowship or whatever church you go to. What's important is what's going on in your house? What's going on with your wife? What's going on with your kids? Is that Because that's really where our Christianity is at, amen? And so we need to hold each other accountable and ask that kind of thing because... You guys are sincere as can be, but the enemy will come at you tomorrow. Even on the way home, he will agitate you and aggravate you and irritate you with something to go on and cause some type of friction. You know, that's the reality of life. It doesn't take away the sincerity or the genuineness of this move of God in your life. This is real. This is real, man. The Holy Spirit is doing an incredible work here. And so as a family, I, Lewis, I'm so loving what you brought up, man. We are going to bind together and say, hey, we're going to be praying for each other. You know, we're going to be holding each other up. We're going to be exhorting one another. What we're going to do, guys, is, is enter in a time of worship, and I'm going to ask you to spend some time with your family. In other words, go to the Lord's table, get the elements, go off into a corner room, sit in some chairs together, and men, I want you to lead your family in communion. I want you to say, Jesus said, this cup <laughs> is my blood, the new covenant for you. Drink in remembrance of me. This bread, I want you to take that to your family, to your wife, to your kids. This is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And I want you to lead them the whole time saying, this is what brings us together. This is what makes us one, what Jesus did on the cross. Be that spiritual leader. It's an incredible time of healing. And for those of you that are not maybe part of this type of covenant of intimacy, may I tell you what, there's other people that need prayer in this room. We are going to just put a big smile on Father God's face tonight, which I'm pretty sure it's already there, you know, just by saying, Lord, we're going to just honor you in every way we can as we worship, as we call down healing in this place. Let's just invite the Holy Spirit to move in this place. Father God, we want to commit this time of communion this time of prayer to you, this time of healing. Lord, we know this was only the beginning. This is just the appetizer of even what you're going to do tonight as a man will embrace his wife and look into her eyes and give and receive forgiveness. Father God, we're going to believe tonight as we remember what you did on the cross, that Holy Spirit, you will come tonight and bring deep inner healing in every soul in this room. Father, for those that know not the gospel of Jesus Christ, may you allow them to bend a knee tonight and find salvation. For the backslidden lamb tonight, Lord, may you bring them to repentance and restoration in your grace, God. Father, may you have your way. Lord, we know the more that we seek you, the more that we find you. We stand upon your promise, Lord, that we seek you with all of our heart, you will be found. So, Father, we seek you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.